Talking while playing is hard. Episode 10. This will be a short one uh, because mostly I don't want to spoil this game for anybody who's actually interested in it. Um, so this is Papa Eo, uh, the newest indie darling on the circuit, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. I finished it last night, um, and it's unique in I don't like it um, for a bevy of reasons. Um, Unreal Engine, I mean, it, it, so let's get into it. Um, first thing that comes out that's kind of glaring that a lot of the other media darlings don't do. So this has almost no art style, and it's bizarre in that it has no art style. Um, from first glance, this looks very much like a Call of Duty, like a Battlefield. And because it's using the Unreal Engine, I understand why it looks that way. And, and because of the setting, this is supposed to be in uh, Brazil, I believe. Uh, everybody speaks Portuguese. Uh, I mean, it makes sense why everything has a sort of brown, disheveled look. Um, why everything is very industrial, sort of slums. But uh, let's let's go forward and let me show you what I mean. So this type of deal right here that you see, the transparent chalk marking, uh, is pretty much the only unique play, uh, art style to the game. And it it doesn't it doesn't interact. You don't interact with it correctly, almost ever. It, like your hands are clipping through it or it's activating not on it, and that's not a huge deal. But it sticks out here when everything is so focused on the little differences. So the premise of this game is basically uh, you are this child and you are, for the majority of the game, controlling this guy here, the monster. And the monster is an allegory for... Um, well, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but if you've read anything about this game, then you, you kind of already know. Um, so here's the other part, or the other thing that I have a problem with in this game. So everything looks very barren, looks very plain. The only things that stick out are the puzzle pieces, which are the chalk lines. And the chalk lines are big beacons that say, come, activate me, now, come here. But every puzzle in the game is like this. All you need to do is find them and use them, and then that's it. Uh, there's very little that you have to deduce for yourself. Um, so, uh, I mean, one of the other big problems that I have about this game is that it, it feels like it can't make the decision about what it wants to be. Does it want to be a puzzle game? Does it want to be a, like a story game predominantly? It feels like it it can't decide. Like it's constantly trying to make the decision of what it wants to be. And in the end, really never settles on it. So now, things like this are pretty cool, where the terrain deforms in order to reveal a larger stage. But, again, everything looks the same. The only thing that looks really different is, like, there will be, occasionally, very well done pieces of art. Um, but it doesn't seem to have any meaning. It's just sort of window dressing. This one, I think, has more meaning than others, but not much. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, the story is you're controlling this big dude, the monster. Basically, you have to guide him around using these fruits that he wants to eat. But more than the fruits that he wants to eat, he wants to eat the frogs even more. And while Monster loves the fruits that grow and will just run back and forth trying to eat them, the, when he eats the frogs, he turns into this giant sort of demonic fire demon. It's symbolism. It's symbolism. Um, but that's kind of okay. Uh, we're, so now more of the area has opened and you need to walk around and try to find the next thing. And it's behind me. And it's big and it sticks out, so you go and you hit it. And, like, I don't know. There's no real subtlety to it. And I think... That really kills a lot of the gravity of everything that's going on. And, uh, so, these are everywhere. These little men tied to posts. And I don't know what they symbolize. 
They're all over the place. I thought they'd be collectibles, but you can't pick them up. Um, anyway, let, let's keep going here. So, things like this, where the terrain deforms in a extremely, um, an extremely jarring way is very cool. But there isn't enough of it. Um, and even more than that, when it does, it makes the mon or it makes the mundane nature of the rest of the stage, the rest of the area, stick out even more as being so mundane. Now, this is a story game, and maybe that's part of it. But, I, I mean, usually when that's the case, eventually it stops being so mundane. Like, eventually there's a grander area, a grander visual motif that comes out, and this game, that never really happens. Um, yeah, so yeah, I set up that, that, that trap, quote-unquote. I said that, that part of the puzzle a little earlier. Um, so, I mean, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, so it's a puzzle game, sure, but it's not a very good one. So it tries to tell a story, but the story isn't told very well. It's this really odd, striking thing where it felt, it feels like they had such a hard time figuring out what they wanted their bottom line to be that in the end they could never really figure it out. Now I've played through this story already, and I, I, it does get you at certain points, certain. Excuse me. Certain uh, things that happen are emotional, and they make you feel for the characters involved. But you don't know much about any of the characters other than the very large overt um, ideals for like surrounding everything. So you understand that the main character here, Chico, uh, cares for his dad or cares for the monster. You understand that the um, the little girl who's running around uh, a lot. Um, to, well, get in there. Go. That's annoying. So yeah, uh, a lot of clipping. Um, the little girl who's running around is leading you, and she wants to help you. It seems like. But at the same time, you don't learn enough about her, ever. Um, you know that Chico loves Monster and wants to help Monster and wants Monster to stop turning into a demon every time he eats the frogs. But, like, it, because it's in such an abstract world where the rules are so ever-changing, you never really get the sense that what you're doing is helping. And again, maybe that's part of it, but in the end, you do have a real disconnect with the characters involved. So, as a puzzle game, it's not great. And as a story, or as a story being told, it's not great. Um, which is kind of a shame. Um, because other games are kind of figuring it out, you know? Uh, there are other games that have silent protagonists. Well, here we go. Yeah. So, when Monster eats the frogs, he turns into this giant fire demon and tries to hurt you. Are we, are we seeing where this is going? And honestly, it, it's pretty overt. Um, I mean, the whole game, I don't think it's any, any secret that it's a allegory for alcohol abuse. Or substance abuse. Substance abuse. I think the thing that bums me out the most about this game is that it doesn't... It doesn't flesh itself out well enough to really be a really grand tale about trying to combat substance abuse. And I think one of the re Oops. one of the reasons why I don't like the story so much, and it, it, this could be just me, this is a totally personal thing, but one of the reasons why I don't like the story as much as maybe other people are or do is that I don't think that the resolution of the story is a healthy one at all. 
I think it's a real one. I think it's a very real world thing. Um, but it's not. It's not a. Uh, not even a happy ending. It's not a. It's not the. The. I don't know. I. I want. I, ugh, it's hard for me to find words for it. Maybe not the ending that I wanted, or it's. It's a very negative. The whole game is very negative. Oh, let's put it that way. And I don't know if you even feel like I'm having spoilers in that. I mean, it, it's very over in its tones, and it, it really makes you understand what all the characters are going through. Well, actually, no, that's not true at all. It, it makes you feel what Chico is going through. And everybody else involved, you really don't. Um... And it, it, it's strange that way. Um, one of the games that I, I came to like quite a bit was um, Enslaved, which is a Ninja Theory game. And I, I equate that game to a stage play. Because in the game, there's only three characters. Um, and you only ever really see three characters. There, are, Every other character in that game is basically a voice calling from off screen. So it feels very much like a production you would see in a small theater. Uh, with a lot of combat, um, but there's a lot of emotion in the characters. There's a lot of fire. You understand how they're feeling and why they feel that way. My, I didn't. So here's the thing: like in cutscenes, there'll be cutscenes where Chico is talking. There'll be cutscenes where she is talking. Her lips do not move, but in other cutscenes, her lips are moving. It's very strange and her motives are just odd because she seems angry at you all the time but she's helping you but she's teasing you but she is helping you it's this weird thing where it probably to the author has a lot of um emotional gravity but to the outside person reading the story watching the story unfold it doesn't have any weight because you are not there. And he, another one of these things... So these happen quite a bit throughout the game, these flashbacks, which sort of equate the allegory, the, the parallels, the real-world parallels to what's happening in this super fanciful world. Um, but, again, these really don't mean anything. And I feel like little tweaks here and there could have really helped it go along. But, um, I don't know. So thinking back to other arty games like this, so I'm thinking back to Bastion, I'm thinking to Journey, I'm thinking to, um, uh, Sound Shapes, I'm thinking to Flow. Um, I feel like they all had to really search a long time to find the engine that they wanted to run their game on because how the game looked and how the game ran would tell a lot about what will or how the game is going to be perceived. Um, and I feel like in this game, it, this game specifically made me really question whether or not Unreal Engine 3 can be used to tell a more complex story. Because, granted, this is sort of a poor example, but just little quirks with the engine that are apparent in other games, uh, like weird draw distance pop-in, uh, the weird... Um, uh, uh, texture pops, uh, the weird collision on certain things. Uh, it takes away from a lot of what you're trying to get within the game. Um, and in other games, in like Call of Duties, in, in Gears of Wars, it doesn't matter as much. But in stuff like this, where the characters are the focus, the world is the focus, the world is a character in and of itself, um, you... It, it, it hurts it dramatically. Um, and it just made me start thinking really heavily whether or not the Unreal Engine is really suited for story-based games. And it's the first time I've really had to wonder whether a piece of software is capable of actually telling a convincing story. 
or as as being a medium for a convincing story. And it, it's uh, it's really interesting because I I come across the uh, art can games be art question a lot, and um, maybe it's not can games be art. It's whether or not certain certain mediums can be art certain mediums certain subsections of games can be art it's it's an interesting conundrum uh because it was nothing that i this game made me think about that in a new light because i totally think games can be art but i also think that in order for games to be art they have to connect with you on an emotional level and i feel like if you were having these dramatic texture pops these dramatic quirks that happen in every game that uses the uh, the engine, it hurts it to the point where you really can't have an emotional connection with it. Um, I only had an emotional connection with this game at the very end. And even then, um, the the problems were still popping up a lot to the point, or to the degree where the beginning of where I was starting to form that connection was really marred. Um, and it, it, it hurt the experience dramatically uh so I, I can understand why people are giving this bad reviews right now and i can understand why people can really dig it i have to say that i was pretty disappointed in it um so maybe you don't want to spend your 15 dollars your 10 dollars on this game um and i i it's frustrating for me to say that because you know um uh, minority is a new developer they put out this is their first game this game's been in development for like three years and it's just not very good. Um, it could be done way better. And the competition for it, the competition for small story-based two to three hour games has never been stiffer. Um, so I don't know. Maybe try the demo. Is there a demo? I don't see how there could be a demo. This game's so short. But Papa EO. Maybe not. I just don't, you know, I want to like it more than I do, but I don't. So, you know, you know, you know, maybe do this instead. Talking while playing is hard. But I'm not